All new developments in the Pacific joint U.S.-Philippine military drills are underway in the South China Sea. And it's leaving China on edge. The U.S. and the Philippines maintains that this is all simply an exercise, but China sees it as a provocation. This has tension mounts between the Philippines and China over disputed territory. Now, the drills are happening here on the western Philippine island of Palawan. There is a standoff between the Philippines and China over who has the rights to the nearby waters. The Philippines says the area lies within their territory. China claims it's theirs. And there's a lot at stake. The island set on what some estimate to be around $50 billion worth of oil. China also in territorial disputes with area, uh, in the area with Indonesia, Taiwan and Vietnam. So, are the military drills a sign of what's to come? And will they be a step toward pushing China to a breaking point? To discuss this, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former Reagan administration official, joins us, joins us now. Welcome, Paul. Um, so the U.S. and the Philippines say these are only drills, nothing to be alarmed over. But is there more to it? Uh, of, of course there is. Um, the military security complex is uh, putting in motion another conflict. Uh, they need a conflict to uh, replace the uh, the war on terror. <laughs> the, the war on terror, you know, it's been going on now for uh, 10, 11 years, and it's proved to be an embarrassment. The, the problem with the war on terror is that uh, the uh, mighty military of the American superpower uh, <clears throat> if, if, if can't defeat a few ragtag insurgents. So in order to keep the war going with Iraq, as they did for seven, eight years, and now in Afghanistan for uh, 10 or 11 years, it's sort of embarrassing. I mean, they don't really want the war to end. They're not trying to win. They're just trying to spend money so the profits flow into the military security complex and comes back in political contributions. But the problem with this type of conflict is it makes the Americans look impotent militarily. The, the notion that the United States military can't defeat a few thousand Taliban <laughs> is embarrassing. So what they need is a, they need a new Cold War like they had with the Soviets. Now, they won't actually come into conflict, but which they can, put, they can keep going for decades. And so China is the obvious candidate. So they're provoking China. They're trying to start, you know, a, a military buildup in China and one that we can point to for more alarm and more buildup here so they can keep the profits flowing into the military security complex. That's what it's all about. It's not about who's, whose islands they are or any of that. It's, it's about we've got to keep the money and the power flowing to the military security complex. But, uh, Paul, at the center of all of this tension, and it's been going on for years now, is oil and money. The islands, the Spratly Islands that, that they are now being disputed, that they're estimated to be sitting on billions of dollars worth of oil. The Philippines says it belongs to them, but China still plans on drilling. So in this case, could China be seen as the aggressor? No, look, all of these, ex all of these excuses are just what they have to concoct. They can't say, oh... We need a long-term conflict to replace the Soviet conflict. Uh, so we've, we've decided to do that with China. They can't say that. So they create uh, make-believe things like oil on, on islands and who do the islands belong to and, and that sort of thing. But that's not the purpose of this. That's not the purpose of starting a conflict <clears throat> with China that they can keep going for years without actually having to fight. <clears throat> uh, the problem with the war on terror is they've been fighting, and yet they don't win. And so that's embarrassing. And that hurts the military's reputation and, and hurts their self-image and the morale. So they need a Cold War, and that's what this is all about. It's not about whose oil it is or who's the aggressor. It, it's about the need to keep money flowing into the military security complex. I mean, if you had peace, what would happen to— all these companies and their profits and Homeland Security and the CIA and all the rest. So that's really what it's about. We really shouldn't let them program us into thinking that China's trying to claim something that's not theirs or that the Philippines are or that they're... I mean, the Philippines wouldn't be a match for China <laughs> anyhow. And the real question is, why does the United States think it has any business being in the South China Sea? 
I mean, what if China was saying that its business was the Gulf of Mexico? I mean, we would be incensed. So why shouldn't China be upset when we say that their home waters is our national interest? All of this is to provoke conflict. It's nothing to do with oil or who owns the islands. Well, Paul, there is a treaty back in the 1950s that um, would that states that if a country were, if something was to threaten the Philippines, that the U.S. would provide some kind of aid. Yes, but China hasn't threatened the Philippines. They're not threatening anybody. <laughs> they're not bombing any countries. They're not invading them. Uh, they're not doing anything. Uh, they're penetrating people economically with trade, and uh, but uh, they're not. You know, look at Africa. China is there on business terms. How is the United States there? They're there with the Africa Command, militarily. <laughs> so China has warned that these military exercises would raise the risk of an armed conf confrontation, and tension has been mounting between these two countries for quite some time. Is that more likely now? I don't think the United States actually wants it to come to an armed conflict. As I said already, I think what they want is another Cold War. They had one with the Soviets. It kept the profits flowing for decades. Uh, now they want another war like that, not a hot war. <clears throat> the trouble with the hot war is you might not win. <clears throat> but the Cold War, you can keep everybody worried. You can keep Homeland Security going. You can keep all the profits flowing into the military complex with new weapon systems and all of that sort of thing. And so that's really what it's about. We, we shouldn't be fooled by what they tell us it's about. It's never about what they tell us about. Remember, there was no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. There are no Iranian nukes. <laughs> the Taliban had nothing to do with 9-11. So, so everything they tell us is wrong. So don't we shouldn't let them get away with it again. No. Paul, there's over 7,000 American and Philippine troops now taking part in this exercise. So it's pretty extensive. So, of course, this is costing a lot of money, taxpayer money. And not too long ago, the Pentagon announced big defense cuts. Um, is there kind of a disconnect here then? Well, they're trying to, they're trying to overcome defense cuts by having uh, a new threat. And so they're turning China into the threat. Uh, yes, th th there is a conflict, but they don't want the defense cuts. I mean, w the, look, President Eisenhower warned the American people in his last public address in 1962 about the military-industrial complex. It's now called the military-security complex, about how it would take all the money that the country had and all the liberty the country had and that people should wake up to the fact. Well, they never did. And that's precisely what it's been doing, and it's what it's doing now. And so China is the new conflict to replace the war on terror. I mean, it's kind of running out, isn't it? They claim they've killed bin Laden. They claim the Taliban is defeated and dispersed. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of hard to say that Iran is, is a terrorist conducting terror around the world. <laughs> so they've got to have a new conflict. So I guess, Paul, um, this is just another sign of the U.S. changing their focus from the Middle East to the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, you can look at it that way. It's a more promising conflict for the military security complex. Paul, pleasure to have you on, as always. That was Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former Reagan administration official.